By popular request, the Luke Skywalker Darth Vader Bespin duel, which first requires that I explain that the plot of The Empire Strikes Back goeth thusly. The rebels are in trouble. The destruction of the Death Star was three years ago now, they're hiding on an ice planet, and everyone gets scattered to the four winds when the Empire shows up. Han and Leia end up on a slow boat to Bespin when their hyperdrive fails, and when they get there, it turns out that Boba Fett has anticipated their arrival and Darth Vader is already there. Ah. And now Han is a wall ornament. Luke, while nearly dying on Hoth, sees a vision of Ben Kenobi telling him to go to the Dagobah system, which he does and he's trained by Yoda for a while, and then he sees a vision of his friends in pain, maybe dying. So he bunks off Jedi training to go and rescue them, even though Ben and Yoda tell him it's a bad idea. Spoiler, it is probably not the best idea? It's a trap! Lando, Leia, Chewie and 3PO had done a reasonably good job of rescuing themselves, although without R2-D2 they wouldn't have been able to fix the Falcon, so there is that. It all kind of worked out. Luke confronts Vader, gets his hand cut off, and learns that Darth Vader is actually his dad. Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. What a twist. I'm not afraid. Yeah. You will be. Oh shoot, son. To kick us off thematically for this fight, we should note that while training with Yoda, Luke finds a place on Dagobah which is strong with the dark side. He goes in and we have the fight with Phantom Vader where it turns out that he is actually Luke. Before he goes in, Yoda tells him, Your weapons. You will not need them. But he takes them anyway, in contrast to the end of Return of the Jedi when he voluntarily relinquishes his weapons on several occasions. Fighting will not help him in the cave, but he tries it anyway. A Jedi uses the Force for knowledge and defence, never for attack, Luke. Luke in the cave is faced with his worst fears, his fear of Vader and his fear of becoming Vader. He asks Yoda, is the dark side stronger? And Yoda says, no, but it is easier and quicker and more seductive. Luke is afraid of dying, but he's also afraid of falling, and both of these things will be significant in the Bespin fight. So Luke sees the future, and because of this, Luke bins off Jedi training to go and try and rescue his friends. So he goes to Cloud City, he is informed, Luke, God, it's a trap! but he tries to follow Leia and the people holding her anyway, but it doesn't work. He came in with just R2, and then we start the isolation at the first door. Not only is Luke separated from R2, the door is closed behind him so he can't go back that way. And we enter the space with the carbon freezing chamber in it, and so the set design is suddenly drastically different to the one Luke has been wandering through for the last couple of minutes. Luke ascends on the little platform thing, and it closes off behind him too. No escape. Creepy breathing, and lights. The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. And nobody will call you one until the end of next movie, Luke, so better get used to it. So he's been herded in here, but he doesn't try to back out. Instead, he goes up to Vader, who is on the high ground. Sorry, that will be the last reference to this in this video. And Vader just waits for Luke to make a move. It's a test. What happens to Lando, Han, Chewie, Leia? Completely irrelevant to Vader now. He's got what he wants. So Luke slowly ascends the steps, moving deeper into the set that seems to have inspired the designers of Portal, and he meaningfully ignites his lightsaber before Vader does the same thing, but you know, slower and more casual. We give a hint of how casual with the fact that Vader is using one hand. Because the thing is, in neither of the Vader-Luke fights does Vader really want to kill Luke. He knows, even if we and Luke do not, that Luke is his son. He'd rather turn Luke to the dark side and have an ally than strike him down with all of his hatred. But as I said, Luke doesn't know that yet, so we get a shot of the tension on Luke's face, and Luke attacks. Luke goes for a head cut, Vader hits back, and Luke has to parry. That casual loop that Vader's lightsaber does to get back into the ready stance is just perfect. Like, how bothered is he? Not very. Luke goes straight in for another head cut, and Vader, still with only one arm, not only parries, but throws Luke back with enough force to get him onto the ground. Not going amazingly so far, but then we play a distance game. I love a distance game. Luke has evidently given up on winning quickly with a swift head chop, so he advances. And Vader retreats. He advances again. Vader retreats again. Give him the old one, two, three, Luke. Three cuts, high, high, low, and then pause dramatically. And then Vader retaliates with another head cut, and then spin and parry! <laughs> Wait, is that a parry? I don't... you know what, it's not important. Several more attacks by Luke, mostly vaguely horizontal, and then Vader, who has actually deigned to bring his second hand into play, retaliates with an actually horizontal horizontal cut, because we can tell who the stage fighter is. Wee! Sparkles! This first section shows us that Luke has at least some idea of what to do with a lightsaber, which is good. It also shows that Vader is in control, so the likelihood of Luke rescuing his friends is significantly lowered at this point. To keep us up to date on said friends, we cut back to Leia, Lando, 3PO, and Chewie's successful escape 
escape from the stormtroopers and reunion with R2-D2, followed by an unsuccessful attempt to save Han. And when we come back, Luke is coming past Vader in a dynamic and dramatic way that says that they carried on fighting while we were away with someone else. Who even knows in what context these moves occurred, but it really doesn't matter. You have learned much, young one. Which confirms our initial impression, but then... You'll find I'm full of surprises. Oh, young fool. Luke attacks, but it goes a bit wrong, and he is not only disarmed, but has to fling himself down the stairs. Vader is no longer playing. He has been testing Luke out. I mean, it's a Bob Anderson fight, or at least he's involved in the fight, so of course there's a testing bit. But now he's getting down to business. The important thing to note is that Luke starts fighting Vader at the top of the stairs and pushes him back during the first part of the scene, but when we return to them, Vader has guided him, by whatever means, back to the same spot again, so that he can push Luke down the stairs towards the carbon freezy thing. Which he does. I forgot about flying Vader, leaping like Batman. Ooh, look, block heels on Luke. Non-diegetic block heels too. And if you don't believe me, wait about 15 seconds because then you will see the shoes again, but flat. That was apropos of nothing, but you know how I feel about costume heels, so. Your destiny lies with me, Skywalker. Obi-Wan knew this to be true. Luke falls into the carbon freezing doodad, but leaps out dramatically while Vader is busy congratulating himself on how efficient he is. All too easy. Oop, no, Luke's up there, having done a big old force jump, actually. Yes, use your environment, Luke. Also, look, his shoes have gone flat again, I told you so. Luke gets his lightsaber back, and Vader is honestly kind of impressed. He saw that Luke picked up some lightsaber skills, but I think he assumed that when he actually started putting some effort in, it would be easy to beat Luke, but not so. Obi-Wan has taught you well. Okay, one second. Now, I know that he doesn't know about Yoda, but has he assumed that Obi-Wan has taught Luke a whole load of things before he died? Because I don't think Anakin has any reason to know about Force ghosts at this moment. Maybe he does, I don't know. Regardless, he's never seen Luke pick up a lightsaber before, so whatever. You have controlled your fear. To hammer home that Luke is a genuine threat now, we have an actual exchange of blows, which honestly look kind of awkward. But never mind, Vader attacks to Luke's low left, mid right, Luke attacks to Vader's high right. Now, release your anger. He's baiting Luke. Swinging his lightsaber at Luke while Luke is climbing up above the carbon freezing chamber is, I think, the first time that Vader actually initiates an attack during this fight, and now he's doing it again but with his lightsaber. And he deigns to use both hands, my gosh. Only your hatred can destroy me. I mean, if you can't immediately get him into the carbon freezing chamber, you can at least psychologically work on him to make him more amenable to the dark side. And Vader attacks again, forcing Luke not only to parry, but also to do some of that forced gymnastics he's been learning with Yoda. The psychological push to release his emotions works, though. Luke goes back on the offensive, and we get lots of obscuring smoke and Luke pushing Vader back until he falls off the platform. Turnabout is fair play, I guess. And then it's time for some cat and mouse as Luke goes into a tunnel. Note that Luke lights up the things around him. Thematic, but not necessarily helpful for him at this moment in time. And we similarly continue the theme of roots closing off behind him as he tries to find a way out. Oh dear. Vader actually takes a deliberate stance this time, and Imperial March. We're in trouble. He's bringing out the big guns now with some throwing of stuff. Without even moving a hand, a big heavy what's it comes off the wall, which Luke has to block, and then Vader takes advantage of his distraction to fight him with a lightsaber some more. Luke retaliates, but eh. And then there's some back and forth, which has Luke looking reasonably on the ball, but Vader just keeps chucking things at him, and that's not great for one's concentration, right? Ooh. That would have hurt. And then he gets hit by several more things until smashy smashy, out the window you go. And look at that dramatic billowy cape, I love it. Now, Luke has varying levels of angry desperation during this fight, but he maintains the same level of effort throughout. Vader, by contrast, being the one in control of the fight, just kind of smoothly ramps it up. He starts by testing Luke, then he attempts capture when capture doesn't work, he ramps up the lightsaber fight, and then he combines the lightsaber fight with chucking heavy stuff, and all the while he's stalking Luke, and all the while he's using his words. Vader has a plan. Luke, not so much. And that's the difference between Empire and Jedi. Jedi is a far more dangerous situation, the fate of the galaxy is at stake. But Luke, even though he is tempted, manages, for quite a significant proportion of it, to keep his anger and his emotions in check. Here he's afraid and angry and desperate, he doesn't have a plan, he doesn't really know what he's doing, and he's clearly outmatched, which is not a great combination. Note please for continuity purposes that as we see Luke dangling from the catwalk, the shot is framed so as to include the lightsaber he was clearly not holding into his hand as he went out the window. Anyway, as Luke is on the catwalk taking a breather, we cut back to our other heroes. Running, jumping, 
telling everyone to evacuate Cloud City before dramatically escaping themselves on the Millennium Falcon. And a lot of that scene is nice and brightly lit and white and clean compared to what's happening in Luke's scene. Leia's situation is getting less hopeless, but Luke's is getting more so. When we go back we have a nice establishing shot so we know where we are in space, and the cat and mouse game continues. Little bit of breathing space, little tension increaser, you know. Luke has fallen out the window, we know that Vader's going to follow, but we can wait for a second. Luke tries to come back inside, but he can't sense Vader, so the only warning he has is the mechanical breath before and now Vader just doesn't bother holding back, in much the same way that Luke will go completely berserk at the end of Return of the Jedi. Luke is driven back outside, and there's a bit here where they just, they're struggling, because even now Vader doesn't actually just want to chop his son in half, right? You are beaten. It is useless to resist. Yeah, that's not a good spot to be in. Don't let yourself be destroyed as Obi-Wan did. And that statement about Obi-Wan is enough to make Luke angry enough to fight again, taking advantage of the fact that Vader doesn't really want to kill him. And we're close in on a lot of these shots, both to emphasize the emotions on Luke's face and to give us the impression that there is nowhere to go. After another exchange, Luke manages to catch Vader a glancing blow on his armor, but it doesn't seem to bother him too much, and he's using the arm immediately afterwards, so... Good armor? And then... Well, that's not good. And at this point, Vader presses the attack with his words again. Don't make me destroy you. You do not yet realize your importance. You're special, Luke. Only I can really understand you, Luke. Join the dark side, Luke. We have cookies. Note that Vader offers to complete his training, which means both, I see you're pretty good with a lightsaber but could be better, and also, let me teach you some things about the dark side. We can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. And you know, I think he really means it. Now obviously it's not the kind of order that Luke would prefer in the galaxy, and you can see Luke edging away even as he's talking. Bless Luke. He's wounded, he's one-handed, he's cornered, but he's still moving, he's still thinking, he's still trying to plan at least. But Vader has one more card to play. Hey, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father, did he? He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. Imperial March. And again, we can destroy the Emperor and rule the galaxy as father and son. Yeah, it's the only way, man. But Luke looks down, decides that this, in fact, is the way, and even giant cities in the clouds must have floors eventually, and if he dies, well, so be it. And he falls. Come with me. It is the only way. Luke doesn't want to die, but he's more afraid of falling to the dark side, and so to prevent that, he literally falls. Poetic. But don't worry, after somehow managing to arrest his terminal velocity to something that won't kill him, he ends up on an aerial thing and discovers a force power that he never knew that he had before, and calls on Leia, who swings by to pick him up. How he knew that she would be in a position to do that is perhaps another question, but never mind. The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi fights are similar in that, in both cases, Vader doesn't really want to kill Luke. In Empire, he either wants to turn him or imprison him so that he can turn him. In Jedi, Luke has already surrendered to him, so he just wants to turn him. The difference is that in Empire, Luke has very little in the way of an actual plan. He has rushed off without really thinking things through, and he hasn't worked through his failure at the cave. He knows what he fears, but he hasn't had the space to overcome that yet. And he goes in without a plan. In Jedi, he's calm. He's really calm, and he uses his words a lot. Here, he has no reason to expect that there is anything that he can tempt Vader with. And so he's on the back foot emotionally, batting away Vader's arguments with approximately the same level of, what's the word I'm looking for, finesse as him batting away the large chunks of metal which come flying at his head. Vader is in control. Vader has all the cards. Vader is the one doing most of the talking and who is resolutely unbothered when Luke attacks him. Luke is out of his depth, and as much as we can see that he can use his lightsaber, he has learned a lot, he can control his fear, he can, in fact, take the hard decisions. This isn't a victory for him, and it costs him a lot more than his hand. But he will take that loss and he will learn from it, and next time, by losing, by surrendering, by refusing to fight, he will win. And if you want to watch my breakdown of that, it should be right next to my face. See you around!